we are from that Jerusalem above. She is their mother. He gave the allegory in relation to Sarah and Hagar. The bride will have a connection with the holy city. There is no holy city on earth. There never has been. Jerusalem is not a holy city. It's a wicked city. Full of homosexuality. Full of murders. Murdering the Arabs and the Palestinians by the hundreds and thousands. Murder. Jerusalem's an evil city. And indeed all cities are evil. There is not a city on earth that is not evil. So it's not the new, old Jerusalem. And we mention Jerusalem because that's what the Bible says. The Bible is the book making the connection to Jerusalem. We would never have thought of Jerusalem if we had never read the Old Testament, if we have never read the Gospels. We who live in another country would never have thought of Jerusalem. It's because the Bible says it. So that's why we speak about Jerusalem. There's going to be a change in the thinking and there has to be in the thinking of believers in relation to Jerusalem. Believers need to recognize we do not belong to the Jerusalem of the days of Paul. We do not belong to the Jerusalem of the days of the apostles, of the days of Jesus. We never have and never will. Even though her foundations are still there, either underneath the dirt or have buildings upon them, even though maybe she has expanded from the time of David when she was never a capital, she was never a capital of David's kingdom. In fact, I cannot recollect any verse in the Old Testament that says she was ever the capital. And when the Romans in their empire ruled that area, by them it was called Palestine and Jerusalem. So we need to get our gaze away from an earthly Jerusalem. Because the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 4 that she is not our mother, that old Jerusalem is not our mother. She is not the mother of any believer. There is not one believer in the Lord Jesus Christ who has ever had any connection to the old Jerusalem because you would have to have been a Hebrew and none of us are Hebrews. There's none around. None exist. There is not one person on earth who is a descendant from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I doubt if there is any person who's a real descendant of Abraham, Isaac and Esau because of intermarriage. People marry other nations all the time. I look at the British, of which, from which I have descended. Saxons, the Jutes, the Angles, the French, uh, who else? The Danes, all mixed up in our blood in the past. Even the Germans, all, all mixed. We're not even a pure race. There is not, it's not possible for there to be a pure race. And as I have said before, I purchased and read two books from a professor in Tel Aviv University in Israel today, and he proved linguistically that neither Sephardic nor Ashkenazi Jew, Jews, as they are called, they call them the that themselves. I don't. I just say Ashkenazi or Sephardic. He proved linguistically, you can buy his books, that they are mixed, that there's not one person alive 
who were descended from the people who were in Palestine 2,000 years ago. Now it's in those books. If you want to buy it to prove what I'm saying is correct, go ahead and buy them. It's a fact. And the Apostle Paul said, we are from that Jerusalem above. She is our mother. He gave the allegory in relation to Sarah and Hagar. And you, you might like to read it. It says in Revelation 21 that this new Jerusalem is a new creation. A new creation. In a symbolic sense, it shows us who and what she is. But this new creation is already in existence as a people because when you read Hebrews 12, 18 to 24, I always say, we as believers have come to the New Jerusalem, to the city of God, to Zion, to the Father, to the blood of Jesus Christ, to the angels, to the believers on earth and to the believers in heaven, we are Zion. We are the New Jerusalem in spirit form. We have come. But one day there's going to be a more than spirit form. There will be a spirit and body form in our new immortal glorified bodies. So the Apostle Peter says in 2 Peter 3, there will be no more old heaven. There will be no more old earth. There will be no more sea. All the elements will be burnt with burning heat. And God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. So John in his vision sees the holy city. He sees her descending new out of heaven as a bride. So the city is a bride. As a bride. Now if he's just talking about something that has form without life, he would never say as a bride. This holy city has life. No city has life. It has buildings. A city only contains life and the life the city contains are people. This holy city is people as a bride adorned for her husband. Of course it's symbolic. But nevertheless we get a picture of the union when we think of Ephesians chapter 5 where it says husbands love your wife as your own body. Now we heard a wonderful sermon on love in the wedding of Prince Harry they call him although his name is not Harry it's Henry something something David. We saw in the in Windsor Castle we saw a black man. The head of the Episcopalian Church of America preaching somewhat wonderfully on the love of a man and wife and there was quoted by somebody else that verse from the Song of Solomon's about love. There is nothing that can stand against love. Well, he, he preached quite a rousing sermon for the Anglican Church of England. There would never have been a sermon like it in all their history. Never. They would acknowledge that themselves. I could see the Archbishop of Canterbury behind him sitting there stern. Had he been an Englishman, he would have stopped him immediately, but no Englishman would have done it. It was really quite an ent entertaining, and my husband says, too long, a sermon. But it touched people's hearts. Love. 
Well, we're not talking about that kind of a love because Jesus said to husbands through Paul, husbands, love your wives as your own body, even as Christ loves the church and gave himself for her. That's why he claims her as his bride, because he gave himself for those elect. He did not give himself for the whole world of sinners because he gave himself for his bride. That's what he sa what is said. Who gave himself for the bride. He gave himself for us if we are in the bride. And so John sees this bride adorned. It's symbolic. As a Jerusalem eternally blessed. A city is redeemed people, immortal, perfect, all the ecclesia, all the elect of God, who were elected in Christ Jesus before the world began, Ephesians 1. We already have been drawn by Christ to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the angels, to the redeemed, to a general assembly. That's what it says in Hebrews. That is called the elect or ecclesia, the redeemed people who are joint heirs with Jesus Christ and will be one day sharing his glory. Christ, who is the head of the body, the ecclesia, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and he is to be the first in all things. He is to be the first in us, whose names are written in the scroll of the life of the Lamb. And the life the city contains are people. This holy city is people, as a bride, adorned for her husband. Of course it's symbolic.